If you thought damage was complicated, you have hell hot on your heels. What am I talking about? Defense is simple. When you get hit, your health is reduced, and if it's reduced below zero, you die. Except if you have shields. Except if it's from a toxin DOT. Unless you're playing Hildren and have over shields, and oh my god, why is everything so needlessly complicated? Warframe ninjas in space. More like Warframe inconsistencies of space. Okay, that doesn't really work, but seriously though, I always think, oh, this will be done quickly. Throw a script together, scream at my microphone for two hours, animate some pretty colors, and oh my god, what is that oh. shit? That is not a reasonable amount of calculations for a single enemy. The math demon I just showed you is damage attenuation, and it is so dumb. But okay, we'll get back to that. We won't actually start with any of the stats displayed in-game. Instead, we'll talk about this nebulous but extremely useful concept of effective health, which simply put is the amount of damage you must sustain for your health to hit zero. And don't worry, we will keep coming back to this. Now, I'm sure you are all familiar with health, shields and armor. Stop! I need your help. This is getting ridiculous. I challenge you, dear viewer, to find me a worse graph. And while you're at it, why don't you subscribe? How about a fellow Tenno, yeah? But as I was saying, the holy trinity standing... No, not that trinity. <clears throat> the holy trinity standing between you and death. And this is also true for enemies, though some enemies may not necessarily have armor or shields. I'll quickly go over each of them and talk about how to interact with one another. The easiest to understand and the most universal is health. Under normal circumstances, your health is reduced when taking damage, and if it hits zero, you die. Under normal circumstances. Shield sits on top of your health and you will almost always take damage to your shields instead of your health, instead of not before. If you have one shield left and take 2 million damage, the remaining damage will just fizzle out. It doesn't transfer to your health and furthermore, your health becomes impervious to damage for 1.3 seconds. That is called a shield gate. Next time your shields are fully depleted, you will only be impervious for 0.3 seconds. That's called a partial shield gate. Your proper shield gate will not recover until you have fully recharged your shields. This is actually a viable strategy for certain frames making use of refreshing their shields over and over again. Shields are represented as a blue bar on the enemies. Then we have that thing we always strip. We are of course talking about armor. Armor is a weak but very accessible form of damage reduction. It applies to your health but not your shields, which normally causes your shields to be rather brittle in comparison. I've heard that armor has diminishing returns, but that's actually not true. Sure, your first 300 armor grants 50% damage reduction, while your first 600 armor only grants 66% and so on and so on, with a diminished return. But here's the thing. Going from taking 100% damage to taking 99% is basically nothing. Just 1%. You are virtually taking the same amount of damage. However, going from taking 2% damage to taking just 1, well, it's still only a 1% difference, but you have now cut the damage you take in half. What this means is that while you get less and less damage reduction, the percentage you shave off becomes more and more valuable. It turns out to actually be linear. Every time you add 300 armor, you add 100% of your health to your effective health pool. So with 900 armor and 1000 health, your effective health pool would be 4,000. Armor is indicated on enemies by their health bar turning orange, and they have a small icon next to their health bar indicating how much of their armor has already been removed. Bleed und Toxic? Now, shields and armor are slightly flimsy because they can simply be bypassed. The status effect of slash bleed will completely ignore armor which allows you to deal an insignificant amount of damage to heavily armored units and then bleed them to death in a single tick. The status effect of toxin toxin will completely bypass seals and instantly annihilate frames relying solely on seals on higher levels. Still, armor has it the worst by several miles of highway to hell 
Not only do you have to worry about LLV one-tapping you through 90,000 effective health, but taking a heat proc, which is fairly common, will cut your armor in half. Furthermore, corrosive procs will reduce your armor by up to 80% at 10 stacks, meaning that potentially at any moment you could lose 90% of your effective health. And at that point, that tends to be it. Lights out. When you consider that shield frames can get away with two mods that offers base stats as well, while health frames have to spend four or even five mod slots just to function sometimes, you have to ask, what are you doing? Let's talk armor, the different types of armor that is, and there is only two types, that of ferrite and alloy armor, which are respectively weak against corrosive and radiation. Now, unlike other categories of elemental weakness and resistance, such as robotic, cloned flesh and infested and so on, which are permanently attached to that enemy, if you strip 100% of the ferrite armor of an enemy, that enemy will no longer be weak to corrosive, but it will also no longer be resilient to electricity and magnetic. So, just to be clear, if you are playing a corrosive build, then you only want to strip 99% of the armor. There are many options for stripping armor. For one, spoilers for the new wall in 3, 2, 1. The Unero Focus School has it baked right in. Then we have Heat and Corrosive again, which stacks but never strips 100% armor. Several Warframes have armor stripping in their design as well. Caliban with Fusion Strike, Ember with Fire Blast and Heat Procs, I guess. Frost with Everlands, Grendel with Regurgitate, Kildren with Pillets, Hydroid doesn't exist and I won't take any questions or give any further explanation. Mag has a tiny armor strip with her Pulverize, Necros with Terrify, Nyx with Psychic Bolt. Normally I wouldn't consider status procs, but Saren has such a consistent source of corrosive that I will allow it. Styanix with Pharos Strike, Warband with Bastille, Saku with the Gaze, Grandpa with Reckoning, but only if the enemies are standing on his freshly watered lawn. And there are also certain augments that will allow abilities to strip armor, such as Seeking Shuriken and Sonic Fracture. Now, let's talk damage reduction. But didn't you just talk about that for like two minutes straight? No, I talked about armor. Damage reduction means pure, unadulterated damage reduction, or DR for short, such as can be found in Gara's Splinter Storm. What sets this apart from armor is that DR cannot be reduced or bypassed. Proper DR usually only comes in the form of Warframe abilities. Let's talk about possibly the most broken mod in the game, Adaption. In enemy dense environments, you know, the ones in which you need protection the most, you get hit so often that this mod simply becomes 90% damage reduction, meaning that a build with 9000 effective health instantly jumps up to 90,000 just by adding this one mod. It is 15 platinum on warframe.market and can be equipped from mastery rank 0. If you don't have it, get it immediately. The last of the defense mechanics is invulnerability. The difference between invulnerability and being impervious is that invulnerability also works on shields. This is most commonly found on Warframe abilities such as Garuda, but it may also be found on Rolling Guard and Protective Sling. Let's go ahead and calculate the effective health on my Baruch build. With overshields, which we can very easily achieve with pellets, we have 300 base shields plus the 1200 overshields, which leaves us with 1500 shields and 802 health, which is in of itself 2302 effective health. Now, we want to be a little extra safe, so we will also run 3 Umbra mods for 511 armor, and for the heck of it, we will also toss health conversion on there for another 1450 armor and another 900 from Arcane Guardian. That is 2861 armor. Great, that is 9.5 times of our health, which is 7683, with the seals that is 9183. Baruch also has his Dislet Hands, which offers a proper 90% damage reduction, which brings us up to 91,830 effective health. Then Baruch has additional damage reduction while his Serene Storm is active, granting us another 40% damage reduction. This brings us up to 153,000 effective health. So I actually forgot, somehow forgot to add adaption, so I'm just gonna put it right here. 
Now, just for the fun of it, let's imagine that we get our overseals from somewhere else and that we are using Null Stars with its cap of 90% damage reduction. That is 1,530,000 effective health. But what if Gara supports us with a Splinter Storm with 90% damage reduction and Trinity blesses us for 75%? That is 61,220,000 effective health. Or in plain English, fucking <laughs> unkillable. Also, I've been told that Garuda can totally tank the steel path by simply sacrificing 4 mod slots because a build can totally handle that. But anyways, that is 1070 health times the armor which is 3 and that equals 4000 effective health. Adding adaption brings us up to 40,000 and that looks like this. You can stop commenting this now. I guess I should talk about why 440% of 225 obviously isn't 555. Well, as you will see, our base health has already been multiplied by 200% since this Warframe is level 30. So removing those 200% we get 75 health. 75 health times the 200% plus vitality plus 1 because that's how percentage work and we get 555. Huh. Would you look at that? Now, that's basically everything you need to know, but let's have some fun and talk about some of the unique enemy damage reduction mechanics and talk about how we can counter them. The four main examples I want to focus on is Lephantis, the various creatures on Deimos, the Sisters of Powers and or Kuvalitius, and finally the Archon boss fight. Let's begin with the former and end with the latter. I will remain solution oriented and save my bitsing for my next video and thusly keep things brief. The Lephantis has 60% damage reduction unless it's in its second state at which point it will have 70% damage reduction. Additionally the Lephantis takes less damage the more damage the weapon has on them in terms of mod and the higher the critical multi but only on critical hits and furthermore attacking vulnerable party parts will cause the Lephantis to have even more damage reduction so basically everything you do to deal more more damage will cause the fences to take less damage. Yes, you heard that right. Furthermore, if you hit the Lephantis a second time within 0.25 seconds, it will take only 10% of the damage dealt and all of this is only true if the damage is less than 10% of the total health of the Lephantis, otherwise each bullet will only deal 10% of the maximum health. Holy hell that is a lot. TLDR, ideally you'd bring a single target rifle with a fire rate of 0.28, but if you have the DPS then you can just overpower it like this. Here is some weird interactions with the Deimos creatures. The Mitosit? Mitosit. Sure. Has its head in the middle. And 50% damage reduction everywhere else causing it to take 600% more damage in the middle. The Deimos Carnis, Deimos Genetrix and the Deimos Saxum are all immune to the viral status effect, which by far is the best that they... Mamma mia! Oh no! Which by far is the best status effect. Finally, we have Deimos Jugglers, which is insanely tanky. At level 108, it has nearly 3 million effective health and it has damage attenuation as well. Which means that if you deal more than 20,000 damage per bullet, which is not that hard to do by the way, then it has 90% damage reduction on top of that. Thusly, that is 30 million effective health and on the steel path, that is 200 million effective health. Luckily, the most of that effective health comes from armor, 94% in fact, so stripping that armor brings us down to just 12 million effective health on the steel path, and then by using rapid fire weapons to get around damage attenuation, we are down to 1.2 million, which is very manageable, and in fact, these enemies are all fossilized, fossilized types, even after stripping their armor completely, allowing us to deal 75% more damage with corrosive. And then we're down to 600,000 effective health, which might sound like a lot, but it really isn't. 
The Sisters of Parvos has the most insane damage attenuation because it doesn't cap and can very easily reach 99% damage reduction and it's not armor so we can't strip it. But luckily Banshee's sonar count towards the damage without counting towards the damage attenuation allowing us to deal a ton of damage to them. Finally we have the Archons and this is unbelievably ridiculously complicated. It is so complicated that I won't actually get into the specifics here, but it has all the same problems with taking less damage the more damage you deal, but on top of that the Archons also take less damage the more damage they have been taking recently. Which means that if you line up your shot perfectly with your shotgun, you will one shot the boss fight, unless your teammate has been shooting at it recently, at which point you will deal no damage basically, and that's really dumb. It is so dumb in fact that I'm dedicating my next video to this giant problem really. But in the meanwhile, you can use this build, get up in the grill of the Archon, and use the alternate fire mode. <laughs>